what is going on everybody this is seven and i'm back again with another video you guys remember last year i did a tutorial on the best settings for obs 2018 now i'm going to be doing the best obs settings for 2019 but this isn't going to be on streamlabs it is strictly just going to be for the regular obs recording streaming platform um, i will make another video on the streamlabs version relatively soon but right now i'm just going to get this out of the way because I do have people asking me how I record and how I stream at the best settings possible. Um, I use this not necessarily for my Xbox, but mainly towards my PC. So these settings will work for Xbox recordings, um, but I have them used for my PC mainly. So they might just vary a little differently, but I'm not going to hold off and talk on that any longer. I'm actually going to show you the settings. Um, I'm going to give you a little rundown on OBS in general. If you don't know how to set up scenes, um, when you set up a new scene, you don't have to name it anything. Uh, it just keeps me more organized. Um, you're going to get a black screen like this once you set up that new scene. And then as you create more, obviously you have different scenes. What you do, let me just remove this really quick. You open a new scene, you can name it whatever you want, like games. And then you go in here and you have display capture, which captures either your main monitor or another monitor. I, I have three monitors, so I set it between different ones depending on which one I need to capture. And I have one open so I can watch the recording live and make sure nothing is going wrong with it. Um, you have game capture, which actually you can set to only record a certain game when it opens which is really nice but if the game capture doesn't work like with Forza Horizon 4 I know there is like a huge issue with uh, game capturing that game it doesn't tend to work so you actually have to do either display capture or window capture um, you get video capture device which is either a webcam like I use I use the Logitech C920 or Elgato or HD PVR or Avermedia whatever you're using to record um, I believe that does work with the Elgato, uh, I don't, I don't remember what the name is called, but it's the PC capture card, one that plugs directly into your motherboard. Um, and then window capture obviously just captures a certain window, whether it's a game, uh, your internet browser, or another instance of OBS if you're making a tutorial like I am. Um, that's pretty much it for... The actual video side um, image and audio and all that really aren't relevant to this because we're talking about recording video but that's how you set up a scene um, you can put whatever you want in there you can really do anything you need next we're gonna go to settings um, I'm not really gonna do stream because this isn't a streaming tutorial this is just for recording but you're gonna want to make sure this output mode up top is set to advanced not simple just make sure it's set to advanced go over to the recording tab um, the type, I keep it as standard. You can do custom, whatever you'd like. I've never really messed with that, so I can't really tell you what that is. Uh, your recording path. Um, I have a secondary hard drive that I send all my recordings to. That way it doesn't clutter up my SSD or my main hard drive. If you don't have that, that's perfectly fine. Just set it to wherever is more convenient for you to go over and find those. Um, the format, I keep that in MP4, but you're more than welcome to change that to whatever you like or whatever you want to use. I keep it at MP4 because it just makes it easier on me when I'm taking it into Sony Vegas or After Effects and editing it. Wow, editing it. <laughs> it just it just makes the whole process easier. FLB, uh, FLV or any of these, I don't really know what they're for exactly. I've never really used any of them. I believe I have used FLV, but it didn't really make much of a difference other than file size. Um, your audio track, you can set multiple tracks if you need to edit multiple tracks like your gameplay sound in one track, the audio as your voice in another. I just keep it at one because I don't normally ever really need to do anything like that. Your actual encoder, this is where it like, comes in important. Um, if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, this will not show up for you. If you have an AMD graphics card, it should show up with AMD Radeon. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I have the 1080. But uh, X264 runs off of your um, integrated graphics built out of your uh, CPU. But if you don't have that, 
then you most likely have a dedicated GPU but if you don't have the dedicated you're gonna run off your processor which this video really isn't for you I probably should have said that earlier because these settings are not really gonna run really well if you're just using a processor to encode things because you're already using a processor and you're just putting crazy strain on it which really is not gonna help you whatsoever it's just gonna make things a lot worse so if you have the AMD or NVIDIA graphics card, um, go with NVENC H.264. It gives you the absolute best. Rescale output, I don't really ever mess with that. You can just choose what you want over in the video tab. I don't put any custom mixer settings in there. Uh, rate control, um, most people keep it on CBR. I keep it on VBR. Uh, you can use it on either one. I just find VBR to be better. I keep my bit rate around 40,000 to 50,000. I have it at 40,000 right now. I don't mess with the keyframe interval, I honestly don't even really know what that does. Um, the preset, I keep it on high quality, but if you can't, you know, let out that extra push of power out of your computer, then keeping it on default or high performance is fine. Um, I wouldn't suggest going low latency, high quality, because you will get some pixelation in the video. So if you can run it at high quality or default honestly high performance is good but it does drop the quality so run it at default or high quality if your computer can handle high quality uh the priest yeah the profile i keep it high i don't keep it at main main doesn't really it's just the default it it doesn't really mess with anything but if you put it at high it obviously encodes at a higher bit rate so it does make the video come out a little bit clearer not a huge difference i keep the level at auto um, I don't really mess with anything out of this at all. I just leave that at auto. I use two pass encoding um, GPU I keep that at zero because I only have one GPU if you have more than one You set it to whatever GPU you want to encode So say if I wanted my first GPU out of the two I have I set that to one to encode if I want the second one only to encode I would set it to two B frames. I leave that at two. I don't ever touch that um when we go over to the audio tab, I usually have my audio bit rate at 320. I'm not sure why it's defaulted back to 160. Anyways, we're going to go over to the audio tab next. Um, you're going to set your uh, desktop audio device to whatever your speakers are. Um, I have um, a USB interface that I use that I run to my speakers, so I don't actually have my speakers installed. Um, the next is the mic auxiliary audio device. I have, like I said... I have an interface so my mic actually shows up uh, right here the Scarlett Solo USB but I run it through voice meter so my voice comes out a little clearer so it's easier in audio editing later um, but you're just gonna set the microphone that you have uh, if you have a desktop and just I'm gonna say this now do not put that at default just please do not if you have to use your webcam microphone your your best bet is better than default um, then the auto meter decay rate, I put that at fast because it keeps it up to date. I don't know, it just makes it easier for me. Um, I don't really mess with anything else here. Your sample rate, uh, you're going to want to go to your audio device settings in your actual computer and see what your sample rate is. Mine's at 48 kilohertz. Um, some people's at 44.1, but mine's at 48, so obviously I set it at 48. Next, we're going to go over to the video tab. Um, I have a 1080p monitor. I actually have a 1440p monitor. I have two of them, but I mainly use the 1080 when I'm recording. It's just easier on my computer, and I I don't know. It just it doesn't make a huge difference. So I set this at 1080. You can set it at uh, 720 if you'd like, but the, your best thing to do is set the base resolution at 1080. And if you have to, you can downscale it to 720 if you need to. Um, but obviously, I'm going to keep it at 1080 because that's what I upload most of my videos in. Your downscale filter, um, I don't really know how to pronounce that. Linksos. Uh, <laughs> I use uh, sharpen scaling at 32 samples because it gives you the best color, the best picture possible. When it comes to FPS, always choose common FPS. Um, I've seen some people use fractional where they'll set the numerator to th uh, 60 and the denominator to 1. I just use it at common because obviously it's just right there. Um, set it to either 60 or 30. You can set it to 59.94, but it does give a little bit of choppiness. Oddly enough, it just a subtle choppiness that kind of looks ugly in the video. So I'm going to set that to 60. That's all you really need to know about 
the settings per se uh you can set the hotkeys so like say if you're in game and you only have one monitor you don't want to have to tab out just to start recording so i have it set to my numpad at the multiply and that starts it and when i'm done i just hit it again and it stops it so that is a great tool to have it's, it works the same for streaming but i don't have that set in this because i don't use this for streaming i use streamlabs obs which like i said i'll make another tutorial on for 2019 relatively soon um you can also use it to switch between scenes um pretty much this is just different scene settings so all that really comes in handy um that's all you really need to know about this you can go over to the advanced tab. oh i almost forgot this this is actually really important if you want the best color range from your video set this to nv12 go to the color space set it to 709 not 601 it trust me it actually does make uh not a huge difference but a pretty subtle this yeah, pretty subtle difference set the color range to full always on full not partial this really doesn't like drop performance it just makes the color pop more it makes the video way more vivid and just it's better to look at uh your process priority you can set this to anything but the higher you have it the more cpu strain it's going to put on your actual computer so i leave it at normal it doesn't really actually make a video difference it just kind of Honestly, it doesn't really do much in my opinion. I haven't seen it do much. It just kind of makes the computer run a lot slower. So that's all you really need to know when it comes to streaming and not streaming, but recording and streaming. Those settings do work for streaming as well, but uh, I'll get into that in another video. I'm not really going to talk about the streaming aspect at this point in time. That's really all you need for the best recording possible. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always comment and ask me. Um, I'll help my absolute best to diagnose your issue if you have any issue with those recording settings. Or if your computer can't handle it, I can always recommend different settings for you. So feel free to drop a comment down below. Please make sure you subscribe if you're new to this channel. And drop a like or drop a dislike if you don't like the tutorial. Anyways, this has been Jake or 7 Have a great day. Peace.